Well, hello there. So, I am working on my China album here. Um, I figured I'd just kind of show you guys. So, I'm going through my folder, and uh, I see some older stuff. I'm curious about this one. Man, it, it, like, I, I didn't know where this was from. So, I want to cat that. Actually, what I want to try to use first will be the... Um, stamp identifier app. I want to try that. And uh, you like airmail, All right? Number one ninety four. I want to put these in there first for whatever reason. I'm just kind of sorting through. Um, I'm seeing some more recent issues and stuff from the People's Republic, and I kind of don't want to deal with that yet. Um, more recent stuff for China. I just want to kind of ignore. I was well organize, organize myself. I actually um, have a few things going on here. Whoa! Look at that really pretty Sioux sheet. Uh, I'll keep that out. I don't know. Oh, 68. That's pretty recent, actually. Some of these that just look old. Gonna check out hmm, koi fish. These look actually pretty old. So I absolutely love using the stamp identifier app. I'd like to switch it to times two magnification. Snap a pick. Crop it a little bit. Some of them I find I don't even have to crop. This app has definitely gotten better over time. Okay, so this is, hmm, this is the People's Republic of China. Russian Revolution, 35th anniversary, Scott number CN194. Hmm. Now you guys wouldn't know this, but I am recording this audio here uh, about a week after I started this album. Big differences between Imperial China, the Empire, the Republic of China, and the People's Republic of China. Uh, basically, as I've been building this album, you know, throughout kind of this time lapse here, I'm becoming more familiar with the stamps, the overprints. There's a lot to know. Um, this is not a simple country. Uh, you know, as far as their stamps uh, to catalog and identify, they're a little complicated. But uh, the more I do it, the better I get. And uh, overall, uh, I've learned quite a bit so far, uh, uh, you know, at this point. Um, and, uh, so as I go, you know, forgive me if I say things that aren't correct. I'm always learning. So been working away on my China album. I actually spent a good bit of time yesterday identifying Imperial China stamps. Now, if any of you have ever bothered to do that, holy freaking crap. What a pain in the butt. <laughs> wow. This is not easy. China, um, doesn't make it easy. Wow. Um, so I've only got a few, like a handful. Well, with uh, what I have here and what I've put in, probably like eight stamps or something in what I own that I was able to identify as being Imperial China and then actually catalog. Um, I have a couple others that I think are probably the People's Republic of China here, but I'm going to have to check these. Uh, I've had great success with the... A stamp identifier app from Colnect. Colnect. Um, it's not perfect. Sometimes it gets me like a similar stamp that at least gives me an idea where to go in the catalog. Um, sometimes it actually is correct. Like I had one the other day, uh, yesterday, that was an over or a surcharge, I think, on one of these imperial stamps. And, you know, it just like identified it like nothing and I thought no way like no way can this thing really be right I mean how could it possibly have correctly identified the stamp and so I went through and I did um you know there was three types so I identified the type uh I looked for secret marks uh, I checked the perfs I checked the watermark like I went through all the steps and I'll be darned it, the the app was right I was completely blown away, like, holy moly, I can't believe that that app is capable of properly identifying 
a complicated stamp with three different types, a surcharge. Um, it's just crazy to me. Uh, wow, that app is something else. And while it isn't perfect, sometimes it uh, is wrong. So you kind of got to be careful with it, right? But um, it really impressed me uh, the other day there. I was just like, holy crap, that's unreal that it can do that. So anyways, I've been working my way through here. Now, see, this is uh, number 385 that I just put in there. Uh, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, uh, this one is a Type 3, and it's going to be, you'd be really hard-pressed to see it, but um, on this kind of top frame line here, there's, the border has vertical shading lines that go the whole way across from here to here, um, and other types have partial shading, so that was a really easy way to figure out um, what type this is of this, of this issue. Um, this is not the earliest issue Sun Yat-sen, the earliest issue has columns here, uh, and I don't, this has some kind of design. So, um, other stuff, uh, like, uh, check the watermark, these are unwatermarked, so, now, these, and, uh, some others, I think, have secret marks. Well, I was just looking in the catalog there, and I couldn't, like, in the catalog, they say... They have five, eight, and ten cent secret marks illustrated for you so you can check. Well, this is a 30 cent, and it didn't have that. And I was really, like, itching about, well, what is the secret mark for this? And I was looking around online, couldn't find any information, um, you know, like, in this series here, this 1940 series, with secret marks, um what are the secret marks on a 30 or a 50 or you know what have you and uh i i didn't realize it's actually right there in the catalog what you look at is the bottom left character on the bottom here of this row of characters uh and it is illustrated in the catalog and basically this little piece will be either connected or not connected and that's your secret mark so i was just looking online uh, i was gonna buy either the stanley gibbons catalog for china or the uh, China Stamp Society catalog, but uh, yeah, I just wasn't looking in my catalog well enough and really reading it. I'm starting to believe people are correct that it is difficult to find these. They are getting more scarce, uh, especially the earlier issues. While I was able, and I'm still waiting, I was able to find a one, two, and three, numbers one, two, and three, I can't find a numbers four through six, um, or like 8 through 11 or whatever, um, or 7 through 10, sorry. Um, like those first issues, I really am having a hard time finding them. I just couldn't come across. I mean, I'm checking eBay, hip stamp. Um, I think I, maybe I found a number 8, but it was an 8C, which um, is not the original issue that's like a dark red vermilion or something this is the original one was like red brown so i'm trying to stick to the legitimate original issues but that's expensive and it's hard so once they show up i'll have these three here which is really cool i always love having the first stamps issued but i'd love to fill these out but man i can't find them uh, what the heck? They're just like not available anywhere. And um, so I have probably more searching I could do, but kind of the big heavy hitters, you know, hip stamp, eBay, um, were just a complete failure. Um, also, a side note, these early Chinese issues uh, for this country, they're known uh, to have lots of forgeries. Uh, so you got to be careful, and that's why I got all these. These are Apex certified, um, uh, and I'll show you guys later. But when they come, but uh, yeah, it makes me kind of wary, you know. Like uh, I think maybe I found uh, somebody listed a number six or something, but it looked in really, really good, vibrant condition, and I was second guessing, like, uh, is that a freaking forgery or not, you know? Because that's scary to think and. So yeah, I'd heard tale that, you know, the Chinese were taking all of their stamps back to China or buying them up and all that stuff, and I'm starting to believe it, because I can't believe how scarce some of these are. 
Um, usually, you know, usually if these things are available, if you're willing to pay the money, you can get them, you know, but I can't find them. I actually can't find them. So, wow. Um, plus, I don't want to go broke. I, I mean, I popped over a grand just to get these uh, first three. Um, and so, yeah, this is all just like, ow, a lot of money, dude, but uh, really cool stamps. Um, and luckily, like these, you know, these other issues... Uh, aren't as expensive, aren't as hard to find, uh, these later issues, so, um, we'll see how all that goes. Anyways, I just wanted to blabber for a moment. I'm enjoying, uh, after painful work yesterday of, you know, this is, this is called the junk stamp here, super common issue, but there's a ton of variations, and it's been reissued several times with overprints and surcharges, and, uh, um, and getting familiar with these, Sun Yat Sen stamps um, was a task. Um, you know, the, there's so many surcharges and so many overprints. China is a big pain in the butt. It is a big pain. And yeah, um, I'm, st I'm still trying to learn, you know, the history here because in the catalog it's Imperial, you know, it's China, which is Imperial China, um, which was an empire. And then uh, it goes Republic of China, which is, I guess, actually just Taiwan, and then the People's Republic of China. So, um, yeah, I'm still trying to cognate everything, honestly. I mean, like, something I'm wondering right at this moment, or I still have been wondering, is, you know, even though it goes China and then People's Re or China and then the Republic of China in parentheses, Taiwan, why, like, I know Taiwan is in China, but why, why not just give it its own listing in the catalog as Taiwan? <sighs> um, so I'm thinking maybe, like, the China, Imperial China, seems to stop at 49, which is where this album is, uh, ends, and then it picks up from the People's Republic at, I think, 1949. So, um, I really think it's like it was Imperial China until it became, you know, the Communist People's Republic of China. And um, I was reading that the Communists finally took over, like, inland China and all that. They finally got it all acquired. Um, and so, yeah, then it became, then it switched. But, why, you know, like, why not, uh, I don't know, I'm just, it confuses me. Like, why Taiwan isn't just considered Taiwan, it's considered the Republic of China. I, I, so I Anyways, I still have a much more learning to do. I haven't made enough effort to really, maybe I should watch some videos or something. Um, just so that I can understand, you know, why it's listed like that. Um, so, yeah. It, it's con confusing to me, um, but I'm glad that I started this. Uh, for one thing, it was just a fantastic excuse to use my new printer to print these album pages. I do love it. I will say, unfortunately, I, I can totally nitpick, and, like, these squares aren't perfect. I think I need to realign my printer head again because there's, like, little divots on you know, all of these squares. I did my best when I set it up, but it seems like it's not perfect, so that kind of sucks. But it doesn't really matter for these, because once you mount them, it kind of covers the square anyways. And it's so minor, you can't really see it unless it's, you're sitting right in front of it looking at it. So, uh, But yeah, I've really been enjoying putting these stamps in after all the hard work to truly identify them with confidence. Um, but I'm just, I mean, I'm going to have, I'm going to be falling so short of getting this album filled out. Ugh. I have so many stamp. I like. I thought I was gonna have much more. I thought, actually, when I opened my China folder, I thought I had more stamps in there. Period. Um, and as I've been sorting through them, see, like I have this stack over here. Like I pulled all these out of my folder and thought, like I thought that was probably Imperial China. Nope, that's the Republic of China. That's Taiwan. Um, Republic of China, seventies. Like, even this guy, what is this? This looks like it would be Imperial China. Um, number 488 with a red surcharge. 1942. Wait, wait. 
is this is Imperial China. I must have put that in the wrong pile. Well, anyways, um, like yeah, this they look. Some of them were looking older. Like I thought maybe this would be Imperial. No, China People Republic. So um, you know they just like they kind of look older. Um, like you know something like that. But it's not actually Imperial China. This is the People's Republic. Gosh darn it. So yeah, I just I've fallen painfully short on have on my Imperial China stamps. Um, I just can't believe how few I actually have. Now in that new collection I just bought, I found um, a nice China binder. Oh boy, I love the binder but it is the People's Republic of China. So there's like no Imperial China stamps in there. Ugh, darn it. So I have a long road ahead of me and probably a lot of money to go um, and to buy all these different China stamps. So this is gonna be an expensive expedition, sorry. Um, an expensive expedition to uh, get this album made and I'm starting to learn like there's some that I'm probably just never gonna have um, you know that I mean, you'll just have to kind of accept that that they're just too rare too expensive it's kind of like you know you never have that Z grill Benjamin stamp in the US world uh, stamp collecting world you know like you're just not gonna have it here's one that I probably will never have uh, dragon half of a half of a 1900 issue on a piece on a, on a post on a envelope uh, so they, they cut the stamp diagonally, right? Um, now, I've seen that in other countries. I didn't know China did that, too. But, um, like, I'm probably going to be really hard-pressed to find this. Now, this is still only listed in the CAD as, ooh, ah, oh, man, 1500 bucks or 750 or something. Um, but, like, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be probably blank forever. I, I don't know if I'll ever find that. And uh, maybe even these other ones. But the nice thing is, having started the album now... You know, 34 years old here. Um, I've got plenty of time left in life to casually wait and uh, keep my eyes open on internet auctions and websites for new listings of the ones I'm missing. And hopefully throughout time, I'll be able to fill this out. So, Anyways, just wanted to share my thoughts. Um, <clears throat> I, I really do like making my own album. Okay, here's one thing that I don't like, though. Uh, uh, so I had a, I think Jan uh, commented on my video and said that she doesn't like these older album pages because they don't include all the different variations. I understand that. I totally get that. Um, but I think it's like a task enough to even just fill this out as is, excluding all the freaking variations. Good grief, you know? Um, so... I'm glad that I didn't, I don't feel like I bit off more than I can chew trying to do it with this, but one thing that I didn't think about at all is uh, these free album pages from the China Stamp Society um, don't have Scott numbers. So yesterday I went through, because I found it very irritating when I was, when I would try to go put stamps in there and I just felt lost, like, you know, I'd have to pull out the catalog and get my bearings and figure out where I am before I put a stamp in because... There's no numbers, so I went through, I actually spent a, several hours, honestly, um, it was tedious, and I went through one one by one and numbered all of these pages with the Scott numbers, so I actually have them all numbered already, it'll just make it so much easier for me to simply put the stamps in the, on the page, um, and it was a little bit tricky because they're not in perfect order on these older album pages either, sometimes they'll have like, uh, you know, a row of four stamps, you know, and this is number 79, this is number 78, 80, and then 81. And it's like, well, why didn't they just have them in a beautiful order? It's like, oh, well, they put the bigger denoms on the side and the smaller denoms in the center. Ugh, okay, well, you know, fine. So they decided to get a little artistic, but it made it very, that kind of stuff made it complicated. Plus, um, you know, sometimes like they'll skip numbers, so I had to. I really had to pay attention when I was numbering this thing because um, they do skip numbers, and uh, maybe you'll skip like five numbers in the Scott catalog, and you'll find that they're actually on the next page for whatever reason. They that's just how they organized it. So it sounds like a simple thing to 
put the Scott number on all these, but it actually turned out to be a pain in the butt. One thing I didn't expect, which I didn't even look into, uh, with this set here, this these pages, there's a absolutely huge postage due section. What the heck? Holy crap. I mean, so yeah, this goes to from uh, 1878 to 1949 with the regular, regular definitives, right? And I think some commemoratives. And then it gets into back of book. So this old style does have back of book and it had, uh, I don't think semi postals, but it had airmail, which was a pretty good section. Postage dues was huge. Um, special delivery. Uh, so yeah, it got into all the kind of oddball back of book stuff, which I didn't even think about when, before I printed these. And, um, so anyways, just my thoughts. Um, I'm working away at it. This is all going well, but China is a task, um, here. And I can only imagine like all of the freaking cataloging I'm going to have to go through and all of the painstaking identifying <laughs> that will be necessary. If you guys have ever browsed through the catalog for China and looked at all those surcharges and reprints and types and overprints, good grief. And I can't actually read any of them. They're completely foreign characters to me. I mean, what the heck does any of that red stuff mean? I can't, I have no idea. So I'm I'm looking like it really you have to be resourceful if you're not Chinese. Uh, you know, if you don't speak like Cantonese, I mean, how do I know what the heck any of these are? I'm, I'm literally scrutinizing like just the curvature of the characters, like, oh, I don't know, that one looks like a triangle with little legs, you know, like, I have no idea what the hell any of this means. <laughs> it's painful. Um, man, I wish I could just read them. Uh, but yeah, that stamp identifier app really helps. Well, hey guys, so I'm fresh off of work and uh, fresh out of the shower. Time to work on some stamps. So, <clears throat> uh, I had a relatively slow day at work and was able to identify a pretty solid bit of Imperial China that I found in my folder. I gotta check that thing better again even because uh, I don't know how I missed a bunch of Imperial China in there but maybe I'm starting to understand what Imperial China stamps are better and um, anyways so I get to put all those in my binder one thing that I'm mo probably most excited about, period, is uh, my APS order showed up today. I got um, number one, Imperial China, but uh, no number two or three, which I also ordered. So uh, I guess they say it's coming in a separate cover. So I'll wait for that. It'll probably show up tomorrow or something. And... Um, this is Apex certified, right? So, uh, I trust their advertising service. I like the APS. I like to support them. That's why I buy from them. I um, have Hip Stamp. Uh, it's probably my next major outlet. And then eBay, maybe. But I kind of try to stay away from eBay um, these days. I've spent plenty of money on there. <clears throat> I think it's great for some supplies. Uh, anyways, I'll get to put this number one into my album. Um, that was $325 for that stamp, so not horrible. Okay, so I'm still kind of crapping my pants here about this. Um, what I have here, which I didn't know, was a Apex cert uh, with they've examined it and their opinion is no opinion what in the heck I've never seen anything like that darn it so they have no opinion so it's kind of pointless that it's even Apex certified it means I would have to send it out to get certified by some specialist wow what a freaking surprise you guys I can't believe this crap I didn't look Actually, they didn't have a picture of the cert. They just listed it as Apex certified. And I guess that that was all that mattered to me, uh, but I never picked up anything about it. No opinion. I uh, guess that it probably said that, and I didn't really know what that meant. So now I do. So they simply have no opinion. But, see, they have... Uh, 
right to like not examine anything that they want and the, they even say that uh, they can they it says that they reserve the right at all times to decline to examine or give an opinion on any item which may include certain coil and imperfect singles weird wow did not expect that I figured it was going to say something along the lines of genuine news uh, slight crease uh, pencil mark uh. <laughs> what the heck I'm blown away so what if it is a forgery <laughs> well so if I get it expertized somewhere else then uh, if it is determined it's a forgery they have a policy where they'll give me a full refund so I'll have to consider if I want to bother crap so anyways looking forward to working on this album some more I'm really enjoying this filling out this album that I've made and I'm pretty much not bothering with price this is not really about that I kinda just want to complete this thing but I have a feeling that I'm probably financially not going to be able to do it all it's going to take a long time but maybe I'll buy cheaper stuff that's more available and put that in first just to kind of fill it out as much as possible as quickly as possible you know what I was just thinking of would be uh, a little bit funny <coughs> is what if I did request another Apex certification even though it already had one that stated no opinion I wonder if they would have felt like that was a slap in the face <laughs> um, <laughs> Or just like an opportunity to come on, give it another shot and see if you're willing to commit to an opinion. How about that? I don't know. Obviously they would choose not to give an opinion uh, in order to be as honest as possible. Ideally. So, anyways, I decided to keep it in this. Uh, with the cert, because of the explanation, it has the cost, you know, what I paid for it and all that crap at the bottom. So, why not? Even though I kind of don't like the page protector, I could probably put it in something better, I suppose. Um, I'll keep that as is for now. And uh, so, this will remain blank, but we all know it's right there. And, uh, yeah, this makes sense. I was thinking about it. Also, this has been... Uh, certified previously, so uh, that would explain why numbers two and three are delayed. Uh, I sure hope that they come back without the same. No opinion, so. Whew. Yeah, so I got all kinds of stuff identified at work. This one actually took me a little while for sure. Um, this is in the Republic of China section under Taiwan, which is at the end of that section in the Scott digital catalog so um, actually wrote down the page number in the catalog just to make it simple for myself in the future but see at the beginning of uh, the Republic of China section it says in parentheses Taiwan but in the back of that section it also has like a provincial section you know, and a, there's the, I guess, the province of China, or uh, Taiwan, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I still haven't looked this stuff up, you guys, uh, to really learn, but this is my best guess, uh, I, when I realized, I couldn't find this, and so I, like, literally just started freaking going page by page through the sections, like, I have to find this stamp, and at the end of this, that section, there it was, and I was blown away to find uh, an actual section of Taiwan in the back. I thought Taiwan was the Republic of China, so learning as I go. And, uh, yeah, painful as that may be for some of you who just simply know all this stuff already, like, you know, I, I don't. 
so yeah I'm learning China uh, this was a pa uh, on paper piece and um, it's the Republic of China so both stamps see provincial issue this was another weird one uh, that took me a while to figure out as well number 164 from Xinjiang I'm probably saying that wrong and uh, it's from 1944 so I had to determine is this Imperial China and um, I tried the stamp identifier app and it did not quite work out initially but I think that it at least directed me to the original issue in which case I had to still find the surcharge so I ended up just freaking thumbing you know figuratively speaking through my digital catalog and Oh God, I eventually found this overprint. It's this is a provincial issue from Xinjiang, and this is an overprint used on a originally Imperial China stamp. Um, you know, the Empire of China, but uh, it just got repurposed. So geez, um, that th these two were painful. Well, see this, uh, some of these were easy. Uh, some of these I actually didn't have a hard time like the three there but this one I did uh, kind of mess around with for a while um, I had a, I, f I kept being insecure if it was reissued or had secret marks um, and eventually I decided to just check everything and verify and it really was a number 316 so I'm glad about that um, so yeah more Imperial China this happens to be People's Republic huge uh, glass a uh, bunch of duplicates and I got a bunch of these look at this the train stamp with like 1949 or whatever five that one says but that one's this is the first issue right there the brown as I'm looking at this, why does it say 1945? I thought it was supposed to say 9. See, look at this one right there. Can you see that? I don't even know if you guys can see that. It says 1949. So, uh, what the heck? Crap. Okay, I gotta redo that one. I didn't realize that. Nice to notice. Um, so some Imperial China. I'm gonna make stacks here, guys. We're just hanging out, right? Taking it slow. <laughs> uh, this is number eight. so. This is Imperial China. I decided that if it's Imperial China, I won't write anything, and if it's the Republic of China or the People's Republic, I'll bother to write it. So the fact that it doesn't say anything. These are Imperial China. I know for a fact my catalog pages go to uh, at least like number a thousand. So uh, it goes a little further. I know that. So China. Okay, this was I said C back. I had trouble with these. Uh, Northeastern provinces. So I had a hard time identifying these. But uh, it I eventually did, and they're not Imperial China, and I don't think I have a section for these ones, so I'm just going to slip these back into my um, folder there. This one has a small tear. Uh, number 299, so crappy stamp, but it's legitimate. 313, I love the postmark on this. Very cool. I was second guessing if there was an overprint on there because of the markings, but I've decided that they are part of the postmark and that this is not a overprint or surcharge, so uh, it makes it a number 313. Oops. I got strips of st uh, mounts sticking to me over here. Revenue stamps, right. I came across some of these. Um, I'm pretty sure they're Imperial China, maybe People's Republic, but I think Imperial, right? 1943. Uh, and then I don't have the catalog for it, so that sucks. Uh, 
yeah, I guess I'll just put that back in the file. Let's see. These are definitely Imperial China. Right here. Um, and yeah, let's see. Republic of China, this little guy. Revenue stamp, again, yeah. This one has a really cool overprint. It looks like a plane or something on the overprint. Like the wings of it. But, um, yeah, I need the specialized catalog. I just, I don't think that's in this catalog. Or this, this album. Uh, and I don't have the catalog. So, what the heck. Let's see. Number 625 and 571 from 1943. Uh, so those are good to go. Okay, this is the People's Republic of China. And this is obviously an, uh, a surcharge. I said perf 12 and a half with a question mark because I did my best. And that's what I think it is. But I'm not 100%. Uh, sorry for the other writing is still there. Perf 12 and a half. 269. Yeah, um, man... I, I just bought a pack of erasable pens that are just black because I've decided that that is my all-time favorite pen right here. The Frixion Point Synergy Clicker that's erasable. And it's 0.5, whatever. I didn't plan the 0.5, but it works for me. Um... I've decided that erasable pens are superior to pencils because they don't leave residue when you erase the ink. So, um, anyways, I'm just becoming a huge convert. And, uh, yeah, the other day, trying to erase all this other crap on these cards and reuse them, uh, I was definitely failing with my pencil, obviously. I can still see it. Quite annoying. And, um, it left a whole bunch of residue. I did a whole stack of them. I tried to clean them off. Makes a huge mess. So, um, the erasable pen, I think, is superior, period. And I'm going to stick with that. Anywho. Uh, yeah, I had great success uh, at work. The Stamp Identifier app, by the way, um, for Connect, I decided to just go ahead and join and get, like, the pro version or whatever it was called. You basically pay, like, $29 a year which is not that bad um, and um, then you don't see ads I don't think it works any better or anything but at least you don't have to see ads and I like to support them uh, so I'm with it and uh, yeah I think I'll just let that go unless some day comes where I decide that I don't need that anymore uh, but <clears throat> we'll see <laughs> Uh, so, People's Republic of China. So, just pretty common stuff, to be honest, that. Uh, people's, this is East China. It is also the People's Republic of China, but um, East China. So, it's like a subsection in China. And, uh, yeah, these were interesting to identify. Uh, going through the motions and working through figuring out what these are with confidence... Um, is making me better um, with Chinese, Chinese stamps. All right, so I just sorted through all of them, and there is only one that says 1945. And how crazy that that was on the top of the pile for me to see like that. So let me try to figure out what the heck is going on. All right, so uh, I give up. I don't know. I don't know. Darn it. Well, I'm going to keep this on top of this pile. I mean, is that a uh, misprint there or what's going on? I don't know. If any of you guys happen to know, <laughs> please let me know. Because uh, what the heck. Anyways, I guess I'll slip this back into the uh, card here. Bummer. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to spend all night on it. I could keep going, but darn. I don't see anything in the catalog. I don't see anything on Google. Um, I don't know. Why does that one say 1945? Shucks. All right. Well, uh, moving on.
Well, you guys would know this. But another day has passed, and I have identified more. So, more to go in. I still have a few left, right? From yesterday. So, um, I swear I am getting better at identifying these. Just to show you guys. And, um, a bunch of different overprints of junk. The ship. And, right, these were Manchuria, actually, those ones. These are all just a bunch of junks. Now, junk had kind of three types. There was a London printing, a Peking printing, and then a second Peking printing. And so there's like subtle differences that you've got to get familiar with um, to determine which junk printing uh, you have of these. And uh, the easiest one, which was the type three, which is the second Peking printing, is these pearls here at the tip of my corner of my car. Those uh, don't have any shading and they're flat. And uh, then you have uh, either, if you're talking type one or two, so the London or the just plain old Peking, um, they'll have kind of more ornate shading in the pearls. And so uh, you can kind of see that maybe. <laughs> but yeah, they're a little bit different. Uh, than these guys so like you can tell kind of side by side the left side is a what is that, type 2 so the first Peking printing and then on the right here this orange one is um, a third printing second Peking printing right just look at the, the pearls right there in the corners um, they're different so the shading Totally different. So that's an easy way. It's like, oh, if it has a flat, uh, kind of white, perfect pearls uh, with no shading, that's a type three or a, a Peking second Peking printing. And then if they have shading, then they're either a London or a first Peking printing. So, um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, there are differences with diagonal lines on the sails to tell between a, a London printing or a first Peking printing and they should be visible diagonal sorry I don't know why it's doing that diagonal lines what the heck um, on the sails see these just look horizontal no sorry these ones actually should have the diagonal let me take a look at this Crap, I'm second guessing myself. Sorry, guys. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so a bunch of martyrs, and then. Let's see, we have type 2. So these are. These ones here are London. Okay, these should have the diagonal. God, I can't. I can't believe I can't remember this right now. Um, type three is flat. Type one and two have shading in the pearls. I think that type one has diagonal shading in the sails. And more shading in the waves be beneath directly beneath the junk ship um, they have more white water rapid like white waves I forget what they call them uh, there's also something about a broken line above the H in China in the design so anyways guys Jesus uh, yeah it, it keeps going and going I th I uh, I'm getting more familiar and the more I do it the better I'll get so anyways, yeah, I got all these identified, get to put them in, and then so after, like, well, I was going to say, after you have, like, the normal junk ships, um, then you have all the different overprints, right? And um, they're not horrible. Let me tell you guys. Well, they're not horrible, in part, 
because of that stamp identifier app that is coming in so handy I actually it, when it tells me what I think the stamp is or what it thinks the stamp is um, then I'll go in the catalog to the number that it says take a look at it and see what uh, is necessary to determine which stamp it is you know the watermark uh, kind of basically just l eyeballing these overprints and making sure that they look like the right thing um, perfs um, and then what type they are and um, verifying that the app is right and you know what a lot of the time it is even if it says it has a low accuracy rating um, that is just utterly so useful and I'm so glad that I bought the premium or the pro version or whatever so um, yeah 30 bucks for a year whatever it was I don't know um, yeah done deal like I'm sold oh my god uh, it is making this so good I had originally heard about the stamp identifier app that Colnect has from exploring stamps so by the way if any of you guys have most of you are probably familiar, but if you've never seen Exploring Stamps on YouTube, he's awesome. He makes, he's probably like the, the Stamp King or something on YouTube. Uh, he makes just like the best quality videos and he really breaks down and explains a lot of different things. Uh, it has changed over the years and it's now become uh, kind of like a, like a vlog, which is kind of like what I am, but his editing skills um, kind of rule the game here on YouTube as far as I'm concerned he, he's a way better editor than me and um, he does the research he's an intelligent guy um, yeah I am a big fan of exploring stamps so anyways I highly recommend checking out his YouTube channel he's the man um, so this has gone great I'm gonna put all these in here I got some food on the way it's Friday night so I'm gonna hang out and I don't feel like working on stamps but I did earlier and uh, yeah this has gone great. I'm loving working on this album. This is <laughs> this is going well. I'm making progress. I'm learning. Uh, what else can I say?